<laughs> to talk about where this story is at and to reflect on this juicy, gross saga, I chatted to the person who originally broke this story a week ago, the Daily Telegraph's national politics editor, Shari Markson. She joined me earlier on today from Canberra. Happy Valentine's Day! And to you too. And look, we're spending Valentine's Day night together. How exciting is oh that? Oh my god, it's meant to be. Um, <laughs> do you want to apologise to Australia for forcing us to think about Barnaby Joyce fucking? Oh my god. Well, let me tell you, I've written this story for eight days in a row. We've had eight front pages in the Daily Telegraph on the Barnaby Joyce story. So that means for the best part of a week and a half at work, I've been trying to avoid thinking of Barnaby Joyce in bed. <laughs> It's, it's, it's unavoidable, surely. All right, update us. What has happened today in Canberra? Is Barnaby Joyce safe as leader of the Nationals? So as the day started, it looked like uh, his future, you know, might not he might not even remain as Deputy Prime Minister by the day uh, had finished, but he is still a leader. His party has come back in uh, in support of him and there have been no open challenges. Uh, it's a question over how long that will last, whether, you know, it will last through the rest of this month. You know, we've got Parliament sitting again in another two weeks' time. Has the PM really been calling around to shore up support and doing the numbers? He has. He has spoken to some uh, nationals, some senior nationals, definitely. I don't know if I'd say calling around, but he has definitely spoken to some other senior nationals about whether they still uh, support Barnaby Joyce and their support, what they communicated back to him, as I understand it, was that it was wavering, it was shaky. And when that question was put to Turnbull uh, during question time yesterday by Labor, he didn't deny it at all. How long has Barnaby got then? Is until the next scandal breaks or for the foreseeable future do you think he's going to be OK? Look, it's, if, if Barnaby Joyce was Julie Bishop or another minister, uh, it's, it's pretty clear that Turnbull would have asked them to step down already. But seeing as it's the National Party, he will stay as long as he has the support of his party and at this stage his party are backing him. When you wrote the story, you, obviously you knew it was a big scoop, big deal, front page news. Did you have any idea that it would reach this level where it's actually endangering his political career? Absolutely none. I thought it was a one day story where we were revealing that the Deputy Prime Minister was about to have a love child with a former staff member. Uh, that was all I thought it was going to be and then it wasn't until you know the next day that I started to really look at um, how the staff member, how Vicky Campy and his girlfriend had been given two newly created jobs and, and that mm. took a, a few days for me to actually stand up and, and firm up that story. How weird is it going to be for this kid when he grows up and looks all this stuff up? Absolutely bizarre. Very, very unusual. I mean, hopefully <laughs> the child will be protected from all of this scandal, uh, you know, until it's old enough to deal with it. It's, it'll be, otherwise it would be very traumatic, you know, really sad. So there's been lots of talk. When, when the story broke last week, there was a lot of hand-wringing in the media and people going, oh, is this our business? And, oh, my gosh, is this in the public interest? Yeah. That's been clearly dismissed. This clearly is an interest, uh, a story with public interest, with real questions that have come out um, in the weeks since it's been broken. But that doesn't mean that every single element that we've learnt about this story is in the public interest. There are some stuff that's just salacious gossip. Has there been anything in the reporting this story, either at your news organisation or elsewhere around the media, that you've thought, nah, that's dodgy, that's actually off-limits? Well, there were a lot of details I left out in the story that I didn't think was was strictly relevant. For example, I knew Vicky Campion had was engaged uh, when she met Barnaby Joyce, and I really didn't delve into her life uh, any more than um, just you know reporting the fact that she was having a baby with Barnaby Joyce. So I didn't include a lot of that detail in my story, which has subsequently come out again. Didn't delve into Barnaby's four daughters. I thought that was also uncomfortable and off limits. This would be a really difficult time for them, um, but since since then, of course, other media have have gone there and, and have um, provided a lot more detail about his family life and about you know a confrontation between Natalie Joyce, uh, Barnaby's wife, who he's now separated from, and Vicky Campion on the streets. You know they've gone into that sort of personal detail, which which is of, of course their choice. But I'm political editor of the Daily Telegraph, so I just had to stick with what I felt was a political story and in the public interest. Do you think the, the photo on the front page of the Daily Telly today adds any? to the public interest political story? Isn't that just a man looking at a member of his staff in one moment in a summit in 2016? We don't know the context of that photo or anything? I think that photograph, uh, you know, they say picture speaks a thousand words and I think that photograph does. You know, that shows uh, Barnaby Joyce when he was the boss of Vicky Campion 
um, in the early stages of their relationship, as I understand it, as it was developing. And, uh, you know, it, it shows exactly the, the sort of relationship that they were having. They were at a work event. Um, they were sitting side by side. Uh, she's, you know, looking beautiful in a, in a quite provocative outfit. And he's eyeing her off. It's an appropriate picture, I reckon. All right. How much bonking is going on at Parliament House? <laughs> a lot. A lot? In the meditation room? What goes on there? <laughs> the meditation. meditation room's famous for uh, romantic liaisons, but I've never gone on it to check out who's in there. You should. That would be a great story. We'll yeah. cross to you there uh, next, time. Um, next time. Have you burnt sources from running this story? Obviously, again, massive scoop for you and front page uh, newspaper and stuff, but does this mean there are a bunch of political actors that will never speak to you again or trust you as a source? I don't know about trust me as a source. I think, um, or I hope all politicians, I think they do definitely trust me because I've established over a long period of time that I would never give up my sources and that's why I've been able to get cabinet leaks and, and things like that. But uh, in terms of uh, people who might not deal with me, again, because they don't like the reporting, certainly, I mean, when I've been, you know, calling around some of the Nationals MPs, the ones who are loyal to Joyce, they really let me have it. Uh, when I phone them up, you know, they'll take the call and then just start yelling at me about how, um, you, well, I'm not going to use the same words, but what they think <laughs> of the stories. And, and that's their right, you know, not, not everyone uh, is comfortable with these stories. I strongly think it's in the public interest, uh, particularly because of the way two jobs were created for Vicky Campion that didn't exist beforehand. Uh, and other, as far as I'm aware, other people were not interviewed for these positions. Uh, and, and that, in my mind, is definitely in the public interest. Finally, because it is Valentine's Day, do you see anything romantic in this story? Is this a story about love <laughs> triumphing against the odds? No, no I think it's, a, I think it's a, a quite a difficult and sad story. You know, it's a marriage breakup. Uh, Barnaby and Natalie had been married 25 years. They have four adult children. I, I think it's very sad. Fair enough. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us, Shari, and thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Tom.